So in this section, we're going to focus on the work of another Renaissance thinker who really caused a breakthrough in the medical world in 1628 when he published his book On the Motion of the Heart. And as the title suggests, this was about the way the human heart worked and also Harvey was particularly interested in the movement of the blood and he made a number of really significant discoveries on the topic of the circulatory system. Now a little bit about who William Harvey was. He was an English physician. He studied at Cambridge but then later on went to Padua and Padua is quite significant because if you remember that was where Vesalius had done a lot of work so Vesalius's approach which included dissection influenced Harvey and Harvey was able to apply a lot of Vesalius's principles to his own work. Now, when he comes back to England, he marries, this is Harvey and not Vesalius, he marries the daughter of Elizabeth I's physician. So basically, he marries the daughter of the Queen's doctor, and this really opens up a lot of doors for him, so much so that in the year 1618, he becomes the king's physician to King James I and later on to James's son, um, Charles. He also, from 1609, works at St Bartholomew's Hospital in London. And he conducts a number of experiments to look at the way that blood moves around the body. So first of all, he does some dissections and he does dissect dead bodies. Um, we have a picture here. I don't want to write on top of it. So I'll see if I can bring it up. There we are. Um, he does experiments where he pushes down on things like arteries and veins. And um, this is an illustration from his book. He dissects dead bodies. He also dissects the cold-blooded animals. Because their systems are slower, he can see what's happening with their circulatory system and he can watch what's happening while they're still alive as well. And then finally, he's quite influenced by the development of renaissance mechanisms particularly the water pump and that helps to further his understanding as well now at this time people's understanding of the function of the heart really was based on the work of galen and galen taught that blood was produced in the liver which he saw as the center of the body and not the heart it was then sent to the heart which pumped it out to different parts of the body where it would basically be used up, it would be consumed. So blood was made up of food that people ate and it was carried to different parts of the body and then it was used up and the liver had to make some more. So according to Galen, the liver produces blood and the body consumes it. He also taught that blood moved from the right ventricle to the left ventricle of the heart, so the different chambers of the heart, um, in tiny little holes, through tiny little holes
in the wall between them, which is called the septum. And what's interesting about this is that there was an Islamic scholar from 13th century Syria called Ibn Nafis, who actually challenged Galen on this. He said that there were no holes in the septum and that the blood got from the right ventricle to the left ventricle by going around the long way through the lungs, which is actually much closer to the truth. The thing is that nobody really pays very much attention to Ibn Nafis when he says this, and it's only really picked up on in the 20th century when people, historians are reading his work. But William Harvey makes a number of discoveries over the course of his investigations that lead him to really challenge Galen's view. So according to Harvey, he measured how much blood was pumping through the arteries at any one time. And he calculated that the amount of blood that pumped through a single place in the arteries in one hour was three times the weight of a man. And at this rate, if the body was consuming all that blood and the liver kept on having to make it, Harvey calculated that the liver would need to produce 1,800 litres of blood a day. Which leads him to the conclusion that actually the liver is not constantly making new blood all the time. Instead, blood circulates through the body. And the heart doesn't just pump it to the ends of the body where it stops. Actually, blood is going around the body all the time. And this is a massive departure from the teachings of Galen. However, Harvey then has to prove how the blood, we know how it's sent out, it was sent out in the arteries, but he then had to explain how the blood made it back to the heart. And his theory was that arteries and veins were part of the same system. So the arteries were sending the oxygenated blood out to different parts of the body and then the veins were bringing it back. And Harvey proved that veins were really one way. He tried pumping liquid through veins and he found that it would only go in one direction. So he proved that veins would always send the blood back to the heart. He did have a problem explaining how the blood got from the arteries to the veins and at this point he had to come up with a theory. His theory was that there were tiny little blood vessels, too small to see, that took the blood from the arteries to the veins. So he also theorised that capillaries, I'm going to write it in capitals because it's important, carried the blood from the arteries to the veins. He couldn't prove that though, which is one of the many criticisms that people come up with against Harvey. Um, a lot of people are very offended that he questions Galen. A lot of people think that it shows he doesn't really know what he's talking about. And they believe that his ideas are just wrong. He himself said that his practice as a physician dropped off a lot because of his, and these are his words, crackpot theories or crackpot ideas. 
So at the time, Harvey's ideas don't really get a lot of approval. A lot of people disagree with him and a lot of people criticise him. It takes a long time for these ideas to be accepted. Now, it helps that in 1661, a scientist... So, 1661, there's a scientist called Marcello Malfighi. That's an A, in case it's not immediately obvious. uses a microscope to provide proof that capillaries actually exist. So that helps to justify Harvey's ideas. But actually, Galen continued to be used in textbooks and Galen's theories around this continued to be used until 1651. Harvey's ideas don't make it into textbooks um, until 1673, so 45 years after he came up with the theory. So it doesn't get a very good reception and it doesn't take hold his ideas don't take hold very quickly but ultimately they do take hold and he also gives some valuable impetus to the field of medical research for one thing um, this really encourages i'm going to do an anachronistic light bulb here because he kind of gives other people ideas. He encourages experimentation. Let's stick with the yellow. Encourages experimentation. He proves the value of dissection as a way of finding things out about the body. And he also inspires further research. Some people are very interested in what he has to say about... Um, the blood and the formation of the blood and they start to look into the di into digestion and they start to look at how the body makes blood so he kickstarts a lot of further research as well he also really challenges the use of phlebotomy and bleeding people remember galen taught that some people had too much blood well according to harvey they couldn't so this is a real challenge to phlebotomy as well and bleeding, and the practice of putting people's veins open. So although Harvey's ideas aren't very well received, ultimately this is a major turning point in the medical understanding of how the body works.